In today's episode of Locked On Oilers, Evander Kane returns. How does that affect the Oilers lineup and how does that affect the Oilers moving forward? All of that and much more in today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers Podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers Game Day producer Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, Evander Kane seems to be making his return to the lineup a couple of weeks earlier than most people have expected, even up to a month earlier than what people expected. What will the lineup look like for the Edmonton Oilers heading into their game tonight against the Seattle Kraken? We will talk about that in a second. But also, this now affects other players as well, as there have been some moves around the Edmonton Oilers. What will it take for the Edmonton Oilers to get back Kyler Yamamoto? Once he's 100% healthy, we will talk about that. And to wrap up today's episode, we will go back to the California road trip and a stop in Vegas as well and see just how important that road trip is to the Edmonton Oilers, especially with the Vander Kane returning to the lineup. All that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Alrighty, let's start off with tonight's game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Seattle Kraken with a little bit of developing-ish news as it sounds like Evander Kane will make his return to the Edmonton Oilers tonight after suffering a horrifying injury to a cut on his wrist on November 8th against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning as Patrick Maroon, as most of us remember, uh, did unfortunately slit uh, Evander Kane's wrist. He is making his return tonight. At least that is the chatter. Jay Woodcroft has put him as a game time decision. He is available to the Edmonton Oilers, it sounds like, as well, as he has cleared all the hurdles possible to make the return now as team doctors, independent doctors, and everybody else that could possibly give him the clear has given him the all clear. Is it a little too early? I guess only uh, D- uh, Evander Kane and the do- do- doctors, excuse me, da 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 da, the doctors, easy for me to say, um, uh, can know, and we will see just how healthy Evander Kane is tonight. So, where will he slot in for the Edmonton Oilers? Well, uh, this is the lineup for right now for the Edmonton Oilers. This is subject to change, of course, as all Oilers lineups do. But for now, Leon Dreisaitl will start off on the top line with Connor McDavid and Zach Hyman. Kaleem Kostin will be on the line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Matthias Janmark. Arguably the best Edmonton Oilers line of the past couple of games. And... Evander Kane will slot in right now in the third line with Ryan McLeod and Warren Fogle. Dylan Holloway and presumably Derek Ryan will be the 10th and 11th forwards for the Edmonton Oilers as it is being rumored that Yessa Puliarvi will be a healthy scratch for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. An interesting thing to watch over the next couple of days as well when it comes to that. The Oilers' defense stays the same as Darnell Nurse and Cody Ceci will be the top pairing. Brett Kulak and Tyson Berry will make up the second pair. Philip Broberg and Evan Bouchard will make up the third pair. And Vinny DeHarnay, who's had a nice little stay with the Edmonton Oilers, will play tonight, it sounds like, against Seattle, making the trip back to Edmonton. We'll talk about DeHarnay in a little bit. Uh, Jack Jack Campbell getting another start for the Edmonton Oilers tonight against those Seattle Kraken. Very interesting start for him. We will also talk about him a little later on on today's episode. Let's go to the flip side as the Seattle Kraken have been on an absolute tear as of late, winning eight of their last nine games, most of them coming on the road, and as well handing the Boston Bruins their first home defeat in regulation so far far this year and they've been on a roll yes they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning I believe 4-1 if 
I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. Uh, there and uh, here's their lineup for right now. As Andre Burkowski lines up on the top line with Matty Beniers and Jordan Eberly, Ryan Donato alongside Alex Wenberg and Jared McCann, Ely Tolvanen, who has been a fantastic player for the Kraken so far this year. Uh, lines up on the third line alongside Yanni Gord and Oliver Bjorkstrand. And Brandon Tanev on the fourth line alongside Geeky and Sprong. The defensive core for the Kraken, Adam Larson and Vince Dunn. Jamie Alexiak with Justin Schultz. Carter Soucy alongside Will Borgen. And it seems like Martin Jones will get the start as Philip Grubauer started the game last night against the Tampa Bay Lions. Lightning. Now, as mentioned, Evander Kane is starting for the Edmonton Oilers, or it will be playing, it sounds like, for the Edmonton Oilers. So, there needed to be some moves to make room for Evander Kane. So, what happened? Marcus Niemelainen getting sent down to Bakersfield alongside uh, Calvin Pickard as well, as Stuart Skinner has returned to the team. Kyler Yamamoto has been sent to LTIR alongside Ryan Murray. We will talk about Kyler Yamamoto and that situation later on today's episode. And Stuart Skinner and Evander Kane have been activated from the IR as well. Well, Skinner on the IR and uh, Kane on the LT. I are. Now, as mentioned, yes, Apuliarvi will most likely be a healthy scratch for the Edmonton Oilers tonight as rumors, of course, continue to swirl around whether or not, or pro probably, honestly, not whether or not, more of when, if not if, uh, yes, Apuliarvi gets moved. Is a deal in the works? No, I don't think so. But I do think yes, Apuliarvi's played better as of late. Ha did score a goal uh, on that road trip in California, also through the uh, gloves, uh, through the mitts, I should say. Um, interesting move to have him uh the healthy scratch tonight but not too shocked as Derek Ryan does also play on the penalty kill that probably helps over yes Puliyarvi especially with the Vander Kane also being back Vander Kane will help the Edmonton Oilers at 5 on 5 but also mostly in his own end as well has been the Edmonton Oilers has been one of the Edmonton Oilers better uh defensive forwards for them not only this year but last year as well so I don't know how long Evander Kane will get in tonight's game against the Seattle Kraken. One thing that will be interesting to watch around Evander Kane is A, how tentative, tentative he is around uh, board battles and with engaged with other team, or with the other team, excuse me, and to see... How he acts when he goes down to the ice. I'm sure he's going to fall to the ice at some point. I want to see how quickly he gets up, how he gets up, if he uses his hands to get up, those types of things. So a couple of interesting things to watch for from Evander Kane tonight and the Edmonton Oilers. But as mentioned... Kyler Yamamoto has to hit LTIR in order for the Oilers to be cap compliant. But what happens when Kyler Yamamoto is healthy? A couple of moves have to be made. What is the process? So the Edmonton Oilers have both Kyler Yamamoto and Evander Kane back in the lineup. Well, we will talk about that in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds for every professional and amateur league out there. I'm talking pro football, college football. Yes, I know that's over. But there's also college basketball going on. Go Bruins, UCLA, one of the best teams in the nation. Just saying. Uh, NBA is going on. The Premier League is going on. The Manchester Derby was fantastic. Liverpool losing. What could be better if you're a Manchester United fan, <clears throat> me, and a little bit of a Premier League action as well? They've got all of that at Bet Online. Plus, if you love sports podcasts, which if you're listening to this one, you probably do, you can find those at Bet Online as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. 
Alrighty, as mentioned, Kyler Yamamoto has hit the LTIR for the Edmonton Oilers, making room for Evander Kane on the Edmonton Oilers active roster. We also mentioned Calvin Pickard, Calvin Pickard, excuse me, and Marcus Niemelainen sent back down to the AHL, meaning Vinny DeHarnay is staying with the team, but. Once Kyler Yamamoto returns, the Edmonton Oilers are going to have to make some moves to become cap compliant once again. Now, the earliest Kyler Yamamoto can return from injury is February 12th. Now, a little while still until February 12th, post uh, All-Star game, post bye week as well for the Edmonton Oilers. So a convenient time for the Edmonton Oilers, but... He still sits in at a $3.1 million cap hit. And once he comes back, the Edmonton Oilers are going to have to make some moves. Now, thanks to Puckpedia, who has been fantastic throughout this offseason and throughout this year as well. Uh, obviously, Puckpedia has been fantastic for years, but very helpful throughout the Edmonton Oilers debacle throughout this past uh, 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 free agency market and since Evander Kane's injury. But... Now with Evander Kane back, and when Kyler Yamamoto does return, the Edmonton Oilers would have to waive Devin Shore and eventually send him down to the Bakersfield Condors, as well, on top of Devin Shore, also send down slash put on waivers someone making more than $1.125 million. So... There are four Edmonton Oilers not named, or well, more specifically, Edmonton Oilers forwards making more than $1.125 million. Not named Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Zach Hyman, or Evander Kane. Obviously, Kyler Yamamoto is in that list as well, but if you're returning him, then it doesn't really matter. Four. Those four forwards for the Edmonton Oilers are. Derek Ryan, Matthias Janmark, Warren Fogle, and Yessa Pugliarvi. Derek Ryan and Matthias Janmark coming in at uh, the $1.125 million mark. Uh, Warren Fogle comes in at a $2.75 million cap hit. And Yessa Pugliarvi at an even $3 million. Yet, in the least amount of games, Matthias Janmark has the most amount of points with four goals, nine assists, 13 points. Then, with the most amount of games, Yessa Pugliarvi has 10 points with four goals, six assists, 45 games played. Warren Fogle, who has the least amount of games, has the least amount of points, but 32 games played, Four goals, four assists, eight points. Have, has been playing better as of late. And has, honestly, it will be very interesting to see him, McLeod, and Kane tonight. And Derek Ryan, as mentioned, kills penalties. Goes out there and plays a strong defensive game. He hasn't really been winning faceoffs too often. But still, five goals, four assists, nine points. Has been a very strong bottom six guy for the Edmonton Oilers so far this year. I take a look at this and I say, well, Matthias Janmark can't be touched. He's a part of the best line for the Edmonton Oilers with Kleem Costin and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Plus has 13 points in 31 games. The least amount of uh, games played, excuse me, between Pugliarvi, Fogel, Ryan, and himself. Has the most amount of points, as mentioned. Warren Fogle has been able to play with Leon Dreisaitl so far this year, has played up and down the lineup, and as mentioned, has played better hockey as of late. Derek Ryan brings his defensive prowess, his ability to play in his own end, his ability to play on the penalty kill, and as also can score as he has the most amount of goals between these four guys with five. So that leaves out Yessa Pugliarvi, to me at least. Four goals, six assists, ten points. Has scored a couple of goals here and there over the last couple of weeks, but still. Now this also comes with the asterisk of the Edmonton Oilers need to put on Devin Shore and a guy with $1.125 million cap hit. 
barring a trade, I could see the Edmonton Oilers potentially trading. Because to me, you don't send down Warren Fogle. And you don't send down Yesapoli Arvi. You can send down Matthias Janmark and you send down Derek Ryan. To me, Derek Ryan or uh, uh, Warren Fogle and Yessa Puliarvi are very tradable and probably would get traded in this scenario. That would mean two point seven five or three million dollars gets taken off the list and is even easier for the Edmonton Oilers to return a Kyler Yamamoto and a full to health Edmonton Oilers lineup. Of course, this is also bearing any other injuries or barring any other injuries as well to any other players. But if the Edmonton Oilers, let's just say theoretically traded Yessa Puliarvi in a deal for a defenseman or whatever that may be, let's just say Yessa Puliarvi has been dealt. Then the Edmonton Oilers, as of February 12th, could have a lineup of Evander Kane, Connor McDavid, and Zach Hyman. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Leon Dreisaitl, and Kyler Yamamoto. Clem Costin, Ryan McLeod, and Matthias Janmark, and Dylan Holloway, and Warren Fogle. I would take those lines. And plus, you could also trade McLeod and, and Nugent Hopkins in the, the top six. Have Keep that line of Costin, Nugent Hopkins, and Janmark fully intact, and have a line that you can trust. Or you can have Holloway up there with uh, Dreisaitl and Yamamoto. Be very comfortable with that as well. Have McLeod be kind of a, a fourth or three C center. Vogel up and down the lineup. You can have a lot of very positive things coming out of this with just a simple move of Yessa Puliyarvi. Maybe in that deal, the Oilers get a defenseman that also shores up the defending spot. And the Edmonton Oilers might have a full lineup just by, like that by February 12th. And trade deadline gets a little easier. You get a guy for bottom six. I don't know. There's, there's uh, I, I think on February 12th could be a very important day for the Edmonton Oilers and what they do with their lineup and how they move forward with the trade deadline. I don't know. Either way, with the addition of Evander Kane, and yes, I know Kyler Yamamoto is out, but the Oilers still had a very solid trip through California with a stop in Vegas. How does that trip affect Evander Kane coming back to the lineup? And just how important was that trip without Evander Kane? We'll talk about that in just a second, but first, today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started using AG1 because I wanted to better my gut health, optimize my immune system, and use a supplement that didn't use a million different pills and all those types of stuff. And that's exactly what I get with Athletic Greens. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your immune system, your nervous system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, your aging, all of the things. All of the things. Plus, it's lifestyle friendly. And whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, it contains less than one gram of sugar with no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, all while still tasting great. Plus, it costs less than $3 a day. That means you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew addiction. Plus, Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by professional athletes. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. 
To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Alrighty, as we wrap up today's episode with a little bit of a recap on the uh, Vegas and California trip for the Edmonton Oilers and just how important it is that Evander Kane is joining the Edmonton Oilers when he is. Now, the Edmonton Oilers started off their trip last week with a difficult loss in Los Angeles, a 6-3 to loss. And you can kind of write that one off a bit. A start of a trip, a difficult trip. The Edmonton Oilers were already laboring into the second half of the season. And it didn't really start off too well as they gave up the first two goals in Los Angeles. Tried to come back with a Kyler Yamamoto goal of himself uh, for himself, but just couldn't do it. The Edmonton Oilers ended up pulling uh, Stuart Skinner, who is having actually a better game than what uh, the scoreline at least suggested. 21 saves on 24 shots. Jack Campbell then came in and had 11 saves on 13 shots. Had a very solid game for the Edmonton Oilers, made saves that he needed to, and kept the Edmonton Oilers in the game, in a game that they almost had no business being in. Uh, As mentioned, Kyler Yamamoto, uh, Ryan McLeod also getting a goal in that one as well. Both of their fourth goals of the year, and uh, Connor McDavid getting a goal in that one as well. Now, I mentioned that game, yes, they do lose, but... You saw something out of the Edmonton Oilers you hadn't seen too much of all season. The Edmonton Oilers had three fights that that game. Clean Costin, and that also included a, a game misconduct at the end of the game, but Clean Costin fought uh, Brandon Lemieux, who is a, an absolute menace on the ice and a very uh, important player to the Los Angeles Kings. Went out there, had a very spirited tilt with him, and started to set the attitude for the rest of the trip. Zach Hyman fought a guy in Sean Dursey, who's been an issue for the Edmonton Oilers since the playoffs, and uh, did stood up very well to him. Same with Yessa Puliarvi, fought uh, Philip Deneau, if I'm not mistaken, there as well. Uh, a spirited tilt in that one too. A very interesting fight. And the Edmonton Oilers are getting fight from players that they needed to. That's important. That is starting to be a stepping stone A for players that uh, you need to see be engaged in a different way. But B, it also shows fight for the crest on the front of the jersey. That is big for the Edmonton Oilers. And the rest of the trip was set from that game. A 6-2 win in Anaheim where they dominated in that one. Campbell, 21 saves on 23 shots, stopping another massive, massive, uh, uh, having another massive, massive game, excuse me, for uh, Jack Campbell there. Dylan Holloway getting the scoring started for the Edmonton Oilers, who is actually technically on the top line for the Oilers in that one in Holloway. Uh, Nugent Hopkins getting his 20th goal and 30th assist on the year. 50 points on the year for uh, Nugent Hopkins in that one. Seeing him start to develop again, somehow develop into a different type of player already late in his career is very important to see and is very important for the Edmonton Oilers to have in their lineup, especially with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl already uh, manning the ship at the top of the list. Having a guy like Ryan Nugent Hopkins be there for the younger players in the bottom six and the middle six is very important for the Oilers. Uh, Clem Costin in that one getting two goals there. In fact, Clem Costin had four goals in the four games for the Edmonton Oilers, four goals in three games as well for Clean Cost. And that is big. Uh, as in the 7 1 game, he scored a goal in that one. He also would score at the game winning goal in Vegas, too. Now, 
The Edmonton Oilers capture six of a possible eight points on that trip. A very mature third period in Vegas, as the Edmonton Oilers like to say. A mature third period. No goals in that third period for or against, which is big because that's a one-goal game. The Edmonton Oilers need to figure out their uh, whole debacle with one-goal games, and that helps against a division rival, division leader in the Vegas Golden Knights. And now for the Edmonton Oilers, not only was the Vegas Golden Knights a division leader, but every game for the Edmonton Oilers on that trip was against a division team. The San Jose Sharks. Yes, they may be lowly, but taking points away from a division rival and keeping points for yourself within the division is important. The Anaheim Ducks having a big 6-2 win after a tough 4-3 loss earlier this year against them in a massive, massive performance by Lucas Dostal. All of those go into a very important win against the Anaheim Ducks. And as well, yes, the Oilers didn't win against the Los Angeles Kings, but they do have a massive game or did have a massive game against the Kings. Yes, they lost 6-3, to three, but important pace-setting game for the Oilers for this trip. Now with the addition of Evander Kane, the Edmonton Oilers are going to be able to hopefully keep that role going against another Pacific Division team in the Seattle Kraken, while also adding a different dimension that A, the Seattle Kraken hasn't faced in the Edmonton Oilers yet with Evander Kane in the lineup, and B, adding another dimension that the Edmonton Oilers didn't have at 5-on-5 five on, five on the power play in their own end, a physical dimension, uh, a, a terror, an absolute terror on the ice as well for him and the Edmonton Oilers. He's going to add another element while also scoring goals for the Edmonton Oilers. So, an important stretch for the Edmonton Oilers here as they play the Seattle Kraken tonight at 7 o'clock at Rogers Place. After that, the Tampa Bay Lightning a very big game at Rogers Place. Then the Oilers hit the road against another Pacific Division team in the Vancouver Canucks. Then the Columbus Blue Jackets come to town. An easier game for the Oilers as they then get an easier road with the, the Black, or the Blue Jackets, excuse me, the Blackhawks, the Red Wings, the Flyers, the Senators, the Canadien, the Red Wings again, and then the Rangers, the Avalanche, the Flyers, the Penguins, the Blue Jackets, all until the Boston Bruins on February 27th. So the Edmonton Oilers do have a relatively quote-unquote easy road up uh, ahead of them here, being able to add Evander Kane on an easy road to try and get more points and get back into the division title race potentially could be big, especially down the stretch. If the Edmonton Oilers can compile points, get those points down the stretch towards the uh, trade deadline with Evander Kane in the lineup, and the Edmonton Oilers might be on a scarier road than people think. Let's wrap it up there, as mentioned, as the Edmonton Oilers pick up a game against the Seattle Kraken. 7 o'clock puck drop here at Rogers Place. A very important one for this one. Evander Kane looking like he will make his return to the lineup. Yes, a RV, a healthy scratch, and Vinny DeHarnay back in the lineup again. Jack Campbell getting the start against what is presumably a matchup against Martin Jones and the Seattle Kraken. We will see you tomorrow with a full review of this game and how Evander Kane did in his return to the lineup. Thank you so much for joining everybody. Hopefully you had a wonderful weekend and we can, at the end of this one, play La Bamba, baby.